Hello, and welcome back to Bite Sized and Neo4j for data scientists. This is part 29 in our series, and part 5 of a series within a series where we're exploring this Kaggle challenge on recommendation engines, which we know lend themselves very well to graphs. Today, we're going to talk about using k nearest neighbors like we did last time, but we're going to use some more sophisticated feature vectors. Specifically, we're going to use graph embeddings today. I'll show you how to create those and, and what to do with them with KNN. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to find me on the internet. Now, report in the important links within our series, the first is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. The second is where you can find all the previous videos in this series, and the third is the repository with all of the code. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this data set. We've talked about it a bunch before, but it's a Kaggle challenge on uh, fashion recommendations, $50,000 up for grabs. So get started on your solutions. Okay, the graph model we're using, again, very basic, customers purchasing articles of clothing, and each of those has a whole bunch of properties associated with the nodes and relationships. Now, we're going to use graph embeddings today, and specifically, I'm going to be using the simplest of all graph embeddings called fast RP or fast random projection. Now, if you want to know more about that, I've blogged about this before. You can go to that link, and it, it kind of walks you through how to create a whole machine learning model with FR, fast RP. But let's get started. So here I have our uh, database here um, with the H&M stuff. And I need to start because we're going to be using uh, the GDS library um, or uh, graph data science. Um, I am going to need to create huh, our, graph, our graph projection or our in-memory graph. Okay, so I'm just copying and pasting this out of the repository. I'm going to use all nodes here, um, and then I'm going to specifically call out the purchased relationship. We don't really have any other relationships, but I'm using an undirected orientation, even though that's directed. Sometimes FastRP prefers these undirected things, and then I'm using a property called price. So let's give this a run really quick. It's going to create us a graph, and in just a second, it will come up here, and we will run FastRP. Um, what I, one thing I will tell you is that we're crunching today on a fairly large graph or large, you know, by the standards of what we've been dealing with in this video series, which I try to limit to five minutes. So um, I'm trying to keep the run times down, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little slow today. Here we have, um, I'm going to now create my fast RP embedding. So what we're doing is we're projecting a graph, which is a very high dimensional space, and we're projecting it into a lower dimensional space. Now here I'm doing something super simple. It's only eight dimensional embedding. So um, this is not at all the best way to um, create a graph embedding. This is just making it really quick. Okay, so um, what you're going to want to do as you create your models is you really want to tune these parameters. Um, there's a lot of other parameters that you can put into FastRP as well. Um, and that's what's in that blog post. Let me just show you really quick uh, what this looks like. Um, so here I have some of my articles and you can see I have an eight dimensional uh, embedding right here. Okay, cool. Now. We want to use those embeddings to run KNN on. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a second in-memory graph and I am going to use both of my article nodes and I'm going to use my customer nodes and I'm bringing in the embedding property and I'm doing that for all relationships here. Okay, so I'm just creating a new graph projection. Okay, and it's going to do that. All right, cool. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. Um, we're going to write our k nearest neighbors um, on that new graph projection. I'm only going to do it for the articles because I'm looking at article similarity here. I want collaborative filtering on those articles of clothing, meaning which articles are similar to which others. Um, my node weight property is embedding in this case, and I'm going to write a new relationship called similar to here. Um, and there'll be a property called score indicating how similar they are. So we're going to give that a run. Now while we're waiting, I do want to mention something, and that is that the new uh, 2.0 version of Graph Data Science comes out next week. It's coming out on March 24th. And some of this syntax is going to change. For instance, KNN is promoted out of the beta tier into production, but also um, this gds.graph.create is changing to gds.graph.project. So um, 
as moving forward, you definitely want to go give GDS 2.0 a try um, and just know that some of my code is going to be uh, deprecated in this bite-sized series. Okay, cool. Now we have our K nearest neighbors. Let's quickly take a look at them. Okay. This will give us here in just a second a graph visualization if I click on the graph button. And let me make that bigger and zoom out a touch. Okay, so I have um, a whole bunch of articles that are similar to other articles, and you can go through and run this yourself and see um, what that similarity looks like. I definitely recommend, I mean, this is definitely not the way to tune a graph embedding just by guessing random, random numbers and making embeddings that are really small. So you're going to want to play around with this on your own and try to optimize for the scores required for the Kaggle challenge. Again, um, I want to send a special shout out to Grant Beasley, who's putting all these great blog posts out about this data set. He's just rocking it. So way to go, Grant. And thank you. If you have any questions or have suggestions for future videos, please reach out to me online. Um, there will be no uh, bite-sized series for the next couple weeks. The developer relations team has taken it on the road, so it's going to be two weeks without a video. Uh, but we'll see you on the flip side. Talk to you later.